The email address is liveadvice, rr at gmail.com. Get your emails in. Uh, I promise we're going to get a couple that are more tailor-made to specific topics with some guests that we're going to have. I just, you know, then life happened, right? We so, got to do a van once. How's it? I think that's, that's definitely something we got to do. It's, it's been too long. All right. Van and I were on the phone the other day for like 20 minutes. So it, that in itself would have been one of the most downloaded episodes I think we would have <laughs> ever had. Love Van. Love Van. Re- very rarely, very rarely do you later in life connect with somebody the way I feel like I've connected with Van. I'm trying to think. There's been a couple other guys lately. I don't know what's going on with me. Friends in your 40s, a novel. Yeah, look at you. Late bloomer? <laughs> yeah, real late. No, because I, then I just started thinking about it. Because somebody <laughs> asked me about somebody else. And they were like, well, how'd you meet that guy? I'm like, I don't know. I just sort of met him recently. You're like, and you hang out? I was like, kind of. Like, he has really cool access to stuff. So he asked me to go. <laughs> and I go. Uh, and then there was, there was somebody else. Somebody That's asked me issue. recently. I need some more access. Yeah. Oh, see, every time we bring up any of this stuff, oh. it turns into the, <laughs> the strain of the Ryan and Kyle thing. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit, guys. Yeah. I think Kyle's going to buy two tickets and be like, Ryan, do you want to go? I got, I got hooked up. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like where are they? Admission. Balcony? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe hit me after. <laughs> <laughs> Use my bonus. Oh, sorry, man. Sorry, oh, man. we're with the bass player and drummer, but I, I don't think we can get you in here. Um, but <laughs> yeah, what do you? I'll. What are we? You good for life advice tomorrow at eleven? All right. Uh, let's see here. We <laughs> got. Zoom. Can't yeah, leave the go. flag, guys. We got a ton. Of I got some feedback. news. Real quick. I got some news. Hold oh, on. oh, okay. I'm going to see Way Dune better tomorrow. Well, no, I'm, uh, I'm going to see Dune tomorrow for everybody that was asking. I'm super excited about it. I rewatched the first one the other day. That movie rips. I, I take back everything I said about even just being lukewarm about it. That movie's awesome, and I'm super pumped. And I'm going to take uh, we were take a picture warm. of the popcorn that I bring home. Well, all we were doing was talking about how if you want to watch or think about something through the lens of like confirming something, okay? Like this is something else I think a lot about. But if I just decided, hey, I, I want to not like something I like, I can probably figure out a path to get there. And that's all we were doing. It was the Durant Dune comp. And then we went full circle and then brought it back around because we got a pretty scathing email about it. And I'm probably going to save it for Friday feedback. But I don't know how anyone could ever listen to that and not realize that we actually all really enjoyed it. But if you wanted to try to be that guy, this is what you would do. But I, like you, Saruti, I love the movie Dune. First one, not as great. There was a way someone could... There was a way someone could grab a clip where it's like, are we sure dude doesn't suck? Like there was probably 90 <laughs> seconds where you could definitely extrapolate that clip from that, that little piece you're talking imagine about. If we got yeah, aggregated. I know what you're talking imagine about. If, like, imagine if we got at, like Sean, the big pick plays a uh, like a clip from our pod and being like, wow, those guys think this movie sucks. That'd be incredible. <laughs> yeah. Especially you, Saruti. Yeah. I mean, you, you're a day one dune guy. All right. Um, read the book, you know, we got a lot of feedback from the thinking of you text. Guys were screen grabbing their texts with their significant others, just saying, hey, thinking of you, it was an off the chart success if you were of a certain demographic. However, uh, hi, guys, coming to you from New Zealand. Glad to hear you enjoyed the trip. Five, eight, 70 kilos. Podcast comp is a shorter but better rugby player than uh, PFT. Felt obliged to reach out for a quick PSA for older guys with a wife and kids texting, thinking of you. I was walking out of the office, uh, listening to the pod, and flicked off the text as soon as you said to. My wife immediately wanted, uh, my wife called, immediately wanting to know what the fuck is up with me. <laughs> it, w- it was a combination of who have you been sleeping with and or has sleep deprivation gotten to him. We have a five-week-old baby along with two toddlers who are driving me insane. Our texts range from has our baby pooped today um, or has either of the toddlers taken my seven iron to the neighbor's baby? Definitely not thinking of you. I tried to explain to her that it was a podcast thing before I could go any further. She told me I've used this excuse before. I once yelled la cheeserie at a stranger on a plane because he was listening to the Kornheiser pod. Anyway, felt the PSA was the right thing to do. I'm sure it's too late for many. Did you guys do it? He's like, thanks guys. I'm doing a full text audit. <laughs> now yeah. she's going what through everything I've ever liked. Thinking of you. Thank you. Are you cheating on me? <laughs> What's been going on? Did either of you guys do it? I didn't do it. 
I didn't know. No. no, I would have got the same response. My wife would have been like, what did you do wrong? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> like, I just not like you. You know, I, I, I am like a buy of flowers out of nowhere guy, but I'm not a text out of nowhere guy. Um, so that would have been a red flag. Kyle. Do it today. I just didn't feel Report like doing back. it. I think she would have liked it. I just didn't feel like it. I'll do it. I mean, I'm I'm in another place do it right now. That might that might that might actually be weird if I if I if I say that here. But who knows? In Vegas. Well, you're yeah, in Ve- you're on. in Vegas. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah, but right? I see what Kyle. Like, well, yeah, yeah. He's been there for Come 24 on. hours, and now he's like, "I love you." Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do it. We've talked about this relationship. You don't. We can't. Kyle can't do that. Honestly, good point. <laughs> My bad. Yep. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, glad glad we put our heads together on that one. Thanks, boys. <laughs> All right. Making decision on jobs coming out of college. Twenty two years old. Six five. One eighty. Nice. nice. Ooh, I don't work out because numbers. I'd rather play golf or who player comp Giannis. Okay. <laughs> All right. You lost me. <laughs> he just went for it. Uh, I'm currently a senior at an at SEC at school. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, maybe he just puts his shoulder down and. There's nothing. They build a wall. He's got his buddies when they go out drinking. They trick. They chant like Trump, just saying, "Build that wall," because he's so much like Giannis. <laughs> uh, all right. Speaking Currently thing, deciding between. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> deciding between two jobs that are similar but different work environments. I'm planning to move home after graduation with close proximity to a big nice. city to save money. Both jobs are a 30 minute commute. Job one's with the company I interned for this past summer and still do today. I'd be working with a team I know well. In this role, I would be able to maintain a great work-life balance, working 40, 50 hours a week. This role would also allow me to work with every sector within my industry, making a very diversified way to grow my knowledge for the future. I would also need to spend close to two grand and 100 hours learning a new computer software before starting the role. Job two. Joining a bigger company that has better name recognition will also pay slightly more. This team is led by bosses who are known well in my industry, but can be very intense and demanding. Some may call them assholes. I can be an asshole myself, though. That doesn't concern me. All right. A little tougher to be the young asshole versus the old asshole. Just a warning. The work-life balance uh, of this is not desirable. Working 55 to 65 hours a week on average and 80 uh, 80 plus hours a week on the high end. This role is much more specified, but if I can make it through this role, doors will open that wouldn't in job one. Both teams are looking for a three to four year commitment. Should I just suck it up and grind out the long hours knowing that job two would pay better and lead to potentially better in the future? I don't mind working like a dog all day if it's worth something in the end. Okay, Uh, I know my answer. And it may not be for the reasons. Yeah, I think you guys would be thing. surprised. You guys might be surprised, what? but I would pick the two job. I would pick. You would do job. both yeah. at the same time. Oh, job number two. No, no, the second job. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I am surprised. <laughs> I would be surprised. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, think I know. Especially you're at saying. that age, that's cool. You have the bandwidth at that age. You like. It's not like your other parts of your life aren't going to suffer because they don't even really exist. Like that's, I think that's a good age to do something like that. I think it's, it's probably a more desirable job for more people too. Like you think of it that way, like, wow, I'm lucky enough to be able to take this one. I would just do it. The other part of it is there is value in jumping around jobs, period. Like just look at the market now. Like when people move jobs, that's how you get raised. That's how you get more money. Like, you know, I know like, some people value loyalty and that's great too. And, you know, you started this place that you intern there and you have, uh, there's obviously some feelings there, but I don't know. I think kind of being a young professional is, is seeing what's out there every couple of years. And, you know, this is only a couple of year commitment and it sucks and you hate it. Then at least you made some money and then you can kind of move on and do and pivot to a different direction. So yeah, I, I think it's kind of a no brainer. The other thing too, uh, there's a couple of things I want to touch on here. I would lean towards job too, because everything that I've done, and this is again, my, opinion and just the decisions that that i've made i'd be like okay if i do this now then where will i be in three years or five years or the longer version of it you know there's a lot of times at espn where i was like i think i'm over this i was like yeah but if you stick this out like a couple more years i remember one time my contract was up and i was making the rounds figuring out what else was out there and there was a place that i kind of liked it was going to be in new york city full time i'd always want to try to live in the city now i you know like those that window's closed i think but the guy that wanted to hire me was like, wait, what's going on? He's like, they're going to put your name on the show. And I was like, yeah. He's like, don't even talk to us. He's like, even if we pay you more, <laughs> like what's, what's the point? Your name's going to be on an ESPN afternoon show. Like that's done. 
end of conversation. He's like, do that for a few more years. And then you're going to have more name recognition and far more value when you go back to market another three years. He's like, if you come here, there's no way, I don't care what you do. There's no way you'll ever match the, the market. And again, that's when radio back then, it was still pre-podcast. It was still like a pretty powerful thing to be able to say, okay, I'm one of five people in the country that has his name on a show for the, and I know there are names on other shows, but you know, the way radio historically works, not to diminish other shows and other slots, but it's the morning, midday and afternoon. Like those, those are how stations are built. So I was like that before that conversation. I'm certainly like that after the conversation, but here's something that you might not be thinking about. And Another quick thing that's worth it's you can say each place wants a three to four year commitment, you know, okay, whatever. It, it doesn't mean I don't know how your contract would work specific for that. Um, but this isn't like you're signing with the Ravens, you know, it's likely something where after a couple of years, if you don't feel like it's working out or you get a better opportunity, then you're just going to make a move anyway. Or if you're after two years going, you know, I don't want to work this much. The fact that you're saying that you're okay with it, like the way you're describing both and saying, Hey, this one's going to be a little better balanced. This one more work, a little more intense, whatever, whatever. But it doesn't sound like you're freaked out by it. It sounds like you know what you're going to be signing up for. The one thing, the first thing that I thought of, well, I guess I've thought of multiple things here, but the first thing that I thought of was because you have a history with the other place, that might be a massive advantage, but it can also be a little weird based on everyone's entry point and where they work. An entry point is a massive massive factor and how you are perceived. And there's always the chance that if you're the summer intern that then becomes full time, that there could be coworkers that are still looking at you as the intern. I know that's mm -hmm. not fair and it's certainly not across the board. And there may be more advantages because you've already established a relationship. So I'm not framing it only as a negative. I'm just raising the possibility that that potential exists to be a negative. But again, I don't know. I don't know what the workplace is like because I've seen places where, you know, the guy that was just the young dude <laughs> telling stories and all of a sudden he's like got a workstation and he's supposedly real you know it's a bit like going from a pledge to a brother and then you show up to the house technically a brother the weekend after you're no longer a pledge thinking man everything's going to be different and then the old guys are still like you're still a fucking loser <laughs> And you're like, well, you eat your pubes last week. Yeah. Dude. What the fuck? <laughs> whoa. Whoa. All right. I don't know. I don't know what goes on. I don't know what goes on. Yeah. That's is that what you that's, that's what Kyle thinks happens. In I don't know. I quit. I quit the yeah. Latino fraternity before we got to see what really was going on. So I don't know. I, I can only assume. Just dudes eating pubes. How are you treasurer then if you quit? I was treasurer of the prospect group. So basically, we were just a gang at that point. <laughs> so They're like, you know, this guy quit, but he's so good with money. Let's make him treasure. Let him hang out. Yeah. Spent it all, made it all back. Unbelievable. <laughs> Do you guys think long term like that? Well, off your story, I remember you told me, you gave me advice years ago. This is when I was running the board on SVP and Rosillo. And I, didn't, I don't know. I didn't know what my future held. And there was an opening on Mike and Mike. And the bosses at ESPN wanted me to, to basically take it. And it was like a, a jump up in responsibility. Obviously, that was like a, the biggest show at the time. And I kind of didn't want to do it. I'm not a morning guy. And I know it's not jumping companies, but I basically jumped to a diff different job. It's and, a, yeah, you were talking like, about jumping. I was working with you at the time. Yeah, it was. I mean, I hated it. Well, not not because the guy. I just wasn't a morning. It's a different person. lifestyle. Like vibe. I just it totally is. I I would sleep in two different. I told this part. I would sleep like four hours in the afternoon and four hours at night because I wanted to watch games. But you were basically like, and I was this when I was working on the show with you. You were like, you have to take this job. Like you have to you have to move on. And uh, I did it for a year. And I think the I and I think I did a pretty good job. And then like the bosses kind of were like, hey, I could tell you're miserable. Like we're gonna there's some things moving around. And then. That was when Van Pelt left, and then I ended up getting, you know, I think I was the, what, the associate producer with you and Danny. So it ended up being like a net positive. But, you know, it was a miserable year, but you have to do it to kind of move up. So uh, it's my advice Mike. you gave me back in the day, and I think it's kind of the same thing now. Yeah, it was the right move, but it's tough. But you were, at least were young enough. But that is, I never want to do that again, and I haven't done it in 20 years. No, I would never do it. Nope. Yeah. Okay. I'd wake up at 3.30 a.m. You can't do that. Start my day. Mm -mm -mm. I wonder if I ever, if I had ever done the morning show, if I would have, no, I already know the answer. The answer is no. But just if I had ever become comfortable enough where I'm like, all right, I'm making all this money and 
show's killing it. I'm just going to show up at 545. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll tell you 545 is still pretty early too, but uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if I could see you doing that. I just don't think I could. I wouldn't, I don't, I don't know that I ever want to get to a point with this job where I'm like, man, yeah, I don't care. Just hit, hit record. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't want to read that. <laughs> no, I just was sometimes I just look, we're not, it's a little I think we should just, no, no, it's just sometimes it can be a little repetitive, obviously, you know, but. I just, I don't know. I'm not in the mood to read that one today. We should do one where it's just life advices that are trying to touch on topics that we've never, ever touched on before. Like just completely break out from the comfort zone of just confusion of dudes, the confusion of the dudes, right? That would be Kyle's, that would be his U.S. tour. A, All right. A new look life uh, advice. <laughs> what, what, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, I don't, I don't even, maybe I don't even know what I'm talking about. I guess. Something that doesn't have to do with a roommate or somebody cheating on somebody is essentially That's what fair. I'm saying. Yeah. But, you know, like there's other ones where I'll read and be like, I don't think I have any good perspective on this. I, I'm the wrong guy to ask. But that's <laughs> not always stopped us. We've, we've been uh, more than comfortable. Not. I on think that's part of the charm, yeah. if what's, you ask me. <laughs> what's your take on international relations? Well, you know, where should I start? <laughs> well, it depends on what your goals are as a as a civilization <laughs> start there that's a civilization. okay uh, <laughs> arguing sports with non-sports did you guys ever try that video game civilization either oh, of you of course yeah my buddies i hated it billion. i hated it couldn't get it's into like a turn base I'm, I'm an age of i'm an age of empires guy i like real time i don't like this turn based nonsense yeah i was definitely more of an age guy but i played civ and here and there i tried it and that was just like what what's going on i was just excited you know, I wanted some kind of Sim City thing, like peak Sim City. That stuff was incredible. I mean, I'm embarrassed to admit how into it I was. And I was like, all right, I'm going to set up sort of a luxury housing area over here by this lake. But and I was like, <laughs> oh, they're mad about the schools. Like, why don't they just start their own charter school? They've got the money. Okay, arguing oh sports with non-sports people. Hey guys, 24 years old, player comp 6'3", Luke Cornett. My question is, should I bother arguing sports with non-sports people? I run into this problem a lot where I can tell immediately the person I'm talking to who knows nothing about sports while they try to argue something dumb and I've decided between battling them on their dumb take or just biting my tongue. My prime example is this coworker I have. Uh, he's in his early 40s. Mm. Oh, so that's, all right. He already just thinks he's smarter than you. Uh, he watches barely any sports but makes the most outrageous sports claims. She get a TV show. The one that triggered me to write this email was him saying, quote, Steph Curry is not the greatest shooter of all time. When I hit him with the stats to prove he, uh, when I hit him with the stats to prove that he is, his response was, quote, what's he shooting? Just threes. If he went inside, he would get crushed. <laughs> I kind of gave up at that point because I, we did say best, like, wasn't the argument best shooter, not best layupper? That's what you should right. do. Hit him with that. Yeah. Just drop it right on his dome. It's mine nugget. I kind of gave up at that like, point wait, because I realized. Number? <laughs> 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 like we just found our new guy for countdown. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll say anything. Yeah. I'm like, no, he's the A block. This is A block material. I'm like LeBron just retired. Sorry. Mm. All right. I kind of gave up that point because I realized there was no getting through to him, but this is just one of the many hot takes he has that makes no sense. It's even worth trying to argue with him about these awful takes or just do I just let it slide? Though it lights a fire in me hearing them. Of course it lights a fire in you. That's a ridiculous thing to say. And you're 24. So with age, you just start. The great thing about, I would say, the list of being young, uh, the great things about being young is probably longer than the great things about being old. But I could also just be talking about injuries. So. I may have the worst perspective. Others are talking about grandchildren. I'm like, you know, I think you got me there. So what I would say is that as you get older, though, you just don't have, you hope, you hope that you mellow out enough. Although I wouldn't necessarily say I'm mellow, but there's just things that you go, yeah, I'm not going to get mad about that. Like, hey, you want to be a fucking moron? Be a moron. I remember there was a time, was every now and then the age gap would show up with Van Pelt and I where Stanford Steve and I were arguing about something that we agreed on 
and we disagreed with Van Pelt on. And Van Pelt completely thought we were like morons about this thing that we were arguing. And I'm not going to say what it was because it was about someone. And Van Pelt just looked at us, and I just never forget it. That's why I'm telling the story now. Is he just looked at us and went, No, really? That's what you guys think? Okay. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and it was that. the Pretty perfect. Good. That's really right, good. It was the it was unbelievable. Cause then Steve and I just felt stupid. Cause we were so certain of what we were saying, the point that we were making. We agreed about this person. Van Pelt disagreed. And Van Pelt just heard us all out. It was like, oh yeah. That's what you guys think? Okay. And then it's over. It's fucking over. And he didn't have to use any of his power reserve, right? He was still a full, full, right. as we're talking video games here. It was all still there because he didn't have to use any moves on us. It was unbelievable. You're like, God, he feels bad for us. God, this is yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, right. He thinks, he's like, God, those guys are so stupid. And now the argument is over because he doesn't want to engage in it. So I think at 24, it's hard to get there, but you might entertain the hell out of yourself. Every time he says that, just ask a quick follow-up and you'll be like, huh, that's interesting. And then just don't engage. Make that your routine. Try to get to that point emotionally like that. where you're like, why am I going to get mad at somebody that can't be convinced? It's the same way when I look at some social media arguments that go on in the comments the whole time. And, you know, maybe it's somebody that's a public figure and then someone that isn't. I just like, would you ever get out of your car at a 7-Eleven and the dude who's out front asking you to buy him something if he had said, hey, this is what I think about the economy, would you go, well, state your case? <laughs> you probably wouldn't. All right? So I, I got to tell you, like, there's something that's amazing about not wanting to argue. And this is from somebody who loved to argue, who actually still enjoys conflict or confrontation at times. But there's just a piece that you can reach, which may be really tough at 24. Like, what, what else are you going to do? You're going to go home and read basketball reference and just hand him. He doesn't care. He's never Load going up. to agree. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. You, matter. There's nothing you can do. The, the best thing you can do is really tie with somebody like this. There are no wins. Yeah, I mean, I think my answer was going to be completely dependent on how often do you see this person. If this is like, you know, two, three times a week and you guys are, you know, passing each other in the hallways or in the in the lunchroom and he's just firing stuff off. Yeah, you got to totally disengage. But if, if this was like a brother in law that you see three times a year and you're like, I can't wait to see what dumb shit he throws at me this time. So I think. I think uh, in that case, you're you're definitely 100% right. And I think your execution is flawless. I would not change anything about how you told him to go about that. That's great. The Van Pelt story is funny because, and you know, we love Van Pelt, but he, more than probably anybody I know, likes to argue with random people on Twitter. So the fact that he just let you and Steve just kind of let it go is a little surprising to me. But maybe that was just like him being like, that was a big dog move where he was like, I'm just going to piss these guys off by not caring, which is a great move. As you said, like I, the not caring thing as you get older, like, cause then that just pisses the person off even more. Like the non argument argument is such a great move. And I've sort of, I've moved to that point in my life on certain things like this. I do take, I do take the bait on Twitter sometimes that things like really, really piss me off. But cause, cause younger me, I mean, you know, I've, told these stories before like i got into it with a guy who was disrespecting brendan shanahan at like a college party and i just like couldn't let it go i was like you're gonna talk like that about hartford whaler great brendan shanahan and my buddies were like why are you yelling right now and uh i just wouldn't do that now like i think you just grow out of that and you just, I've, I've just become like, <laughs> wait a minute, like wait i don't a really care what you think what what I've point was he before, making about brendan shanahan he just said he was like, a, I don't know, that he was like a shithead and whatever and i'm like i don't care man he was an awesome hockey player like i liked him he played for the whalers <laughs> Was, How dare you? Just, yeah, and I was just pissed off. How about old it. were again, you? I was like, Dude, you had to like be 19. so young. This yeah, was sure like, no, no, but to care about Shanahan that much, though. Like, how old were you, Prime Whalers years? Uh, I was like ten, maybe. Yeah, 10, all 11, right. Yeah, I think they left years of his 90, life. I mean, I think they left in ninety-seven. But like, yeah, no, I, I remember was that, when they that left. was the most I was into hockey was when I was a kid, and then they moved when I was, you know, I think I was my roommate wrote a college paper on it. So I remember. Yeah, it sucked. It is Stu Grimson jersey. I took it pretty seriously, as as you as you could tell. And but I wouldn't do that today. Like I just I, I've I've just sort of not. I was way more emotional back then 
And now I, I love, I just love the play of like not caring and having that piss somebody off even more. I am biased because of my own career, but I've always felt like we did this radio segment with Van Pelt years ago where it was basically our sports is sports the topic that the most people feel comfortable talking about not knowing anything about it or is it just well, this is it just that like previews. i know movie yeah I, I mean we got an election <laughs> this year i would argue that there's <laughs> there's there's a lot I of that know, i think on. people are less comfortable about throwing that out depending on who they're talking to yeah that's a good point but they're i'm just like, saying like if you knew nothing about, about, if you knew nothing about sports and there were three or four other people. Would you offer up your opinion in like a more comfortable way? Purdy. I don't just don't think he could do it. Yeah, I don't know. I just don't think so. That I'm little guy Niners games. <laughs> right. Yeah. It also could be my perspective as somebody who's basically spent his entire professional life in it that I'd be like, wait, if this is how I look at it. Does that mean like imagine just walking up to a bunch of like finance guys and be like, how do they come up with 401,000? You know, like just, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Somebody's I like, don't I know if it's my, shorts, so let me explain to you yeah, how this works. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot like fish. Remember Anthony <laughs> Bourdain? Right. That's what they did. And they were the A's and the B's and the C's. Yeah. No, I got it. I got it too. Uh, all right. I think that's it. That was good. Good okay. luck. Was it? Good luck with that. Yep. All right. Thanks to Srudy. Thanks to Kyle. Thanks to Oregon. It's Ryan Russillo Podcasts. Our YouTube channel is up and live. I think a million subs already. Pretty excited about that. Please subscribe to the Ringer Spotify podcast. 